So far, we've tested animation by using the playback controls on the timeline. There's a better way to do that, or at least a more accurate way to do that, and that is to render out a play blast. The play blast tool will render out an external movie in the AVI format, or create a series of IFF renders and use FCheck to play them back. In either case, the playback speed will generally be more accurate than you can get with the timeline, even when the timeline is set to real time. So to demonstrate that, I brought back another bouncing ball scene. This one's called ball underscore bounce. It's in the chapter 10 folder. This particular one I will demonstrate from start to finish in a later video in terms of how we'd actually create it. But for now, we'll just use it as a test. So if you want to make a play blast, you can go up to Window, Play Blast, and look at the option box. Option box. Let's talk about a few of the common options. The very top one is a time range. You can either use a time slider or pick your own start end. In this case, I'm just going to do the entire time slider, which runs from 1 to 30. It also asks you the format. Now, if you leave it to AVI, it'll render out an AVI file. And whatever program on your operating system plays AVIs by default will open up automatically when it's done. So, for instance, if you use Windows Media Player by default, once the AVI is rendered, Windows Media Player will pop up automatically. You can also switch this to IFF. If it's set to IFF, I'll render out Maya's IFF format. Now it'll be a series of frames. Once those are rendered, it'll bring up the F check window, and then you could play it back in the F check window. We'll try IFF. Below that is the display size. You can either pick a very specific display size or simply have it render from the window. They'll actually see what size a window is in terms of the view panel and render out that size. They'll also scale based on that current size. So if you do pick from window and then have a scale, for instance, of 0.5, I'll look at the current window size and scale it down by half. Or like I said, you can pick a custom size, you enter your own pixel values, or even steal the size from the render settings window in terms of the size you'd batch render in. In this case, I want to just leave it the from window. I'll leave the scale at 0.5. You can also choose to save the file permanently. For instance, if you render out an AVI file, you can tell it to save the file down here at the bottom, pick a file name, browse for a location, and the AVI will be permanent. If you do not pick save the file, if that's off, the file is destroyed once you close it. You have a chance to play it back, but once you close it, it's gone then. So in case, we'll try these settings. We'll try time slider. We'll try IFF for F check. We'll try display size from window and a scale of 0.5. Once you set these settings, you can hit play blast. What we'll do is render out the animation through your graphics card to your screen. Now this animation was really simple, so it did it really fast. If you have a longer animation, you'll see that it has to crunch through the frames. You'll see it slowly stepping through the animation on your screen until it reaches the end, and then it pops up either the AVI player, or in this case, FCheck. So while it's actually crunching through the animation, you don't want to move anything over the screen. But since this was a very quick animation, it finished really rapidly. So in any case, what it's done now is rendered out 30 IFF files for this animation, Slow them in the F check, and it plays back instantaneously. It's set to 30 frames per second because that's how this scene was animated. And it's hoping to get to exactly 30 frames per second as best it can. So this is a pretty good indication of the correct speed. Now, just like any other sequence you have in F check, you can use your playback controls to affect the playback, or use your space bar to start and stop, or use your arrow keys to scrub forward or backwards. Now you notice that whatever was on your screen at the time, in other words, what was ever in your view panel will be in the play blast. So I have these locators here, which we'll talk about later on how to make those. We have a curve here. So everything appears, including the axis indicator, the name of the camera, and so on. So it's actually doing a screen capture of the view panel. Now you can hide some elements so you don't get everything to appear in there, because that might interfere with your ability to judge the animation. So what you can do is turn off a few things in advance, at least temporarily. I'm going to go ahead and close F check, and we'll try it again. What you can do is go up to the Show menu in your View panel and turn off various categories of objects and tools and what have you right here. 
When you turn them off, they hide them in that window, but it doesn't destroy them permanently. It's only for this particular view. So for example, there's a locator option. I'll turn off my locators and those will be hidden. I can go back to show once again and then deselect NURBS curves. And that will hide the curves. Now I'm just down to my sphere. So you can hide the various things you might have inside your scene just from that particular view panel. And every single view panel has this menu set. So now I've hidden those locators and curves. So now it'll be easier to gauge my animation. I can go back to Playblast again. I can go through Window, Playblast, or I can go down to the timeline. If I go down to the timeline and right mouse key, there's also a Playblast menu right here. So I'll go back to the option box again. I'll try IFF one more time, but this time I want to scale it up to say 0.75. We'll make the window a little bit bigger. And then once again, I'll hit Play Blast. And if you look closely, it's going to play back the animation in the corner down here until it's finished, and then it'll pop up the window. So Play Blast, plays back, and there's F Check. And this time, because I picked a bigger scale, I get a bigger playback inside F-Check. So you don't have to use Playblast every single time you want to test your animation. You should definitely continue to use your playback controls down here on the timeline. But whenever you reach a critical junction where you really want to gauge the animation to determine if it looks realistic or aesthetic, you might want to consider using Playblast.